The psalm today, Psalm 27, serves as a, a grounding mechanism of sorts. It stands here to remind us that no matter what evil or bad things are happening in our lives, the most important thing, the greatest desire we can have, is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our lives, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek Him in His temple. War can rise up against us. Enemies can rise up against us. Wrongdoers can rise up against us. Yet we will mark our lives not by those who hate us, but by Him who loves us. What does it mean if someone tells lies about you? What is it worth when someone hurts your feelings? What value is it when gangs of wrongdoers attempt to detract you? The psalmist says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? We know that at the end of all things is the judgment of God. We know that at the last day he will stand upon the earth. We know that sins will be reckoned. And those who have wronged us will have to look into the face of God himself but so will we. And thankfully, we know, above all else, that God's justice is not without mercy. But we should not let the knowledge of mercy fool us into believing that there will not be justice. God will not punish as we deserve, and He will reward more than we're worth. But we should nonetheless strive to put away evil things and live according to the truth, to love, charity, and holiness. The psalmist understands this. He is right to beg for God's mercy, for he knows what we would often like to forget. We are sinners. We are the children of God, and yet we are sinners. As Martin Luther said, simul justus et peccator, sinners and saints. As the psalmist says, you speak in my heart and say, seek my face, your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper, cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. For the saint knows that his help is in God alone, and the sinner knows he is unworthy to receive it. But the saint knows that the help comes nonetheless. We long to see that which we are unworthy to behold, and yet the very desire is enough for God not to turn His face away from us. The mere longing for Him is enough not to preclude our salvation. Deliver me not into the hands of my adversaries, the psalmist continues, for false witnesses have risen up against me and those who speak malice. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? The sins against us will never be enough to stop our hope. They cannot be, because we are created in the image of Him who sees our sins against Him and yet still suffers the cross for our sake. That all may be saved. Or as St. Paul writes in the reading this morning, for many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you, even with tears, their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of His glory. Or as St. Paul said in Romans 8, which we studied this last week in Bible study, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold His own Son but gave Him up for all of us, will He not also with Him give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? 
It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus, yes, who died, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. So when you suffer the reproach of others, remember that our Lord has walked the same path. But as Palm Sunday will remind us very soon, the path of praise and the path of scorn are littered with the same people, people like us, the sinner saints, who desire the blood of Christ at once in the chalice that they may worship Him, and again upon the cross that we may kill him. Look to your own lives. Are you a citizen of Jerusalem, the golden Jerusalem, the city of the great king? Or are you a city of Jerusalem, that city that kills the prophets and stones those sent to it? Look carefully. You will want to know the answer before God tells you the truth.